Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Well, everybody is freaking out about the pistol brace rule, and for good reason. There's a lot of people out here telling you how to think. I want to give you some things to think about. Now, there's a lot to be digested here in 292 pages. I've done a much longer video about it, this one right here. So if you really want to geek out on it, that's the place to go. But today, I want to do it in a much shorter time. I want to give you some bullet points, the kinds of things that you need to understand to figure out what this really means to you. So today, let's spend a few minutes and talk about a quick summary of ATF's new pistol brace rule. Okay, so like I said, this is going to be a quick rundown of ATF's new pistol brace rule, 292 glorious pages of rulemaking orders by your Department of Justice. But let me give it to you in a few minutes as fast as I can. This will be a little bit like a lightning round. This is, of course, ATF's attempt to regulate a whole slew, millions and millions of new firearms known as AR pistols or pistols with attached stabilizing braces and reclassify them as unlawful short barrel rifles which need to be federally regulated and registered with the federal government. Now their proposed rule originally was going to use a form 4999, a four-point scale with all sorts of criteria to determine whether or not we had an SBR or an AR pistol. The new rule has abandoned 4999 altogether, however, takes many of the components that was in 4999 and now places it in a new sub-definition in 27 CFR section 478.11 and 479.11. That is a statute that defines rifle right like this. What the Department of Justice believes is that the section of the statute designed or redesigned, made or remade, and intended to be fired from the shoulder is in fact vague. And so therefore they have come up with six new criteria, four of which come directly off ATF's form 4999, two more of which come from outer space or some other arbitrary place. And so what the new rule or what the new definition is and what ATF is doing here is they are adding additional definitions in the Code of Federal Regulations as far as the rifle definition to help further define what constitutes a firearm which is intended or designed to be fired from the shoulder. And that includes some firearms with attached stabilizing braces. If the surface area of that stabilizing brace is one that could be shouldered, and then there are six other criteria by which the courts and or Department of Justice is supposed to determine. Now, I'm going to list those six criteria, but please understand that there is absolutely... No mention as to does any one of these weigh more than the other or it is two out of six good, but four out of six bad or anything like that. So these are completely subjective, arbitrary criteria. But the six criteria that the Department of Justice says they will look at when examining a firearm with an attached stabilizing brace are as follows. One, whether the weapon has a weight or length consistent with the weight of or length of a similarly designed rifle. Two, whether the weapon has a length of pull measured from the center of the trigger to the center of the shoulder stock or other rearward accessory component or attachment that is consistent with similarly designed rifles. Three, whether the weapon is equipped with sights or a scope with eye relief that requires the weapon to be fired from the shoulder in order to be used as designed. Four, whether the surface area that allows the weapon to be fired from the shoulder is created by a buffer tube, receiver extension, or any other accessory component or other rearward attachment that is necessary for the cycle of operations. Five, the manufacturer's direct and indirect marketing and promotional materials indicating the intended use of the weapon. And six, information demonstrating the likely use of the weapon in the general community. So as you can see, numbers one through four come directly off form 4999, but numbers five and six come from just someone pulling something out of God knows where. So that's what the rule does. It redefines rifle to suggest that some firearms, some pistols with attached stabilizing braces may also be rifles depending on this criteria. Okay, the next important thing, when does this rule go into effect? 
any published rule to the Code of Federal Regulations goes into effect 120 days following the date of its publication. Now, I inadvertently had said that the publication date was January 13th. It was not. That was the date that they disseminated the rule. The publication date will be somewhere probably January 17th or 18th, which means you are looking at an effective date of this rule 120 days from that, roughly around May 17th or May 18th. However, and this is important if you're an FFL, this rule goes into effect immediately. However, ATF will not enforce this rule for the next 60, for the first 60 days following publication. So if you have items in inventory that you believe need to be brought into compliance with this new regulation, you got 60 days to do that. That is really important. What can you do to avoid having to deal with this? Well, number one, you can destroy the firearm. Not a very wise choice. Number two, you can call your ATF and surrender the firearm. Number three, you can submit the firearm for determination. Or finally, you can reconfigure the firearm. The easiest way to do that is to pull the shorter barrel, any barrel, upper receiver that has a barrel less than 16 inches off the firearm. You can put a 16-inch barrel onto it. At that point, we're not even dealing with a potential short barrel rifle. Now, interestingly, at that point, you could also take the stabilizing brace off and put a shoulder stock on. That would be fine. And let us remember, we can convert pistols to rifles but we cannot convert rifles to pistols, okay? Remember that, and we've done that video right here about it. Okay, and then finally, what should you do in the here and now? I'll tell you what I'm going to do, because I obviously have some firearms that potentially fall under this. I ain't doing jack squat right now. I'm going to give this 30 or 60 days. It's clear that you, under this amnesty registration, so long as you have your application submitted within that 120 days, ATF will deem that you are in lawful possession pending, pending approval and or rejection of your application, and you will be exempt from the $200 tax stamp. Anybody who makes the application after that 120 days, it's going to be a normal NFA application, including the $200 tax stamp. But I know the lawsuits are coming. I know the injunctions are coming. I know a lot's going to happen. And I'm not going to do anything for at least 30, maybe even 60 days before I decide what my next move is. That's what I plan on doing. Obviously, that's only what I plan on doing. Again, we do not here at Washington Gun Law want to tell you guys how to think. We just want to give you some stuff to think about. That is the pistol brace rule in a nutshell. Obviously, there's 292 pages. There is a lot more to it. If you want to further geek out on it, we did a much longer video, this one right here. And we will be doing more follow-up videos as we break down critical components of this rule. In the meantime, if you have any questions about this rule or anything else, what's left of your Second Amendment rights, you guys know the drill. You can always contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com or, of course, you can call us directly at 425-765-0487. In the meantime, let's remember, part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Law, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.